Okay, so we're at where we're adding question types and looking at different kinds of questions. Um, short answer, good for your name. Obviously, this is a short answer question. Every, make I make all questions required, unless it's maybe a survey. That's probably the only place that I don't use that. Okay. So let's get to the first section where I'm actually doing content. I'm in the section. I want to go add a question. It's up here, the little plus sign. And let's say I start off with multiple choice. I don't know. Which is positive, right? And proton, electron. And make sure you're doing the answer key because, again, you want this to grade it. You don't want that extra work. That's the whole point of the form. And you want to go over here and shuffle. Okay, you want to shuffle because otherwise they could, you know, everything's just going to be A or they could easily, you know, cheat from their partner and be like, oh, okay, it was A. Well, it's not because it's going to shuffle and every kid's going to get a different shuffle. Okay. Also, you can change the point value. I usually keep everything one. But, you know, it's up to you. You can make it worth more, more if you like. And then make sure you're hitting done. So, again, that answer key and the point value is over here. And then the three dots is where I was able to shuffle it. Okay. Now, if you're going to link or do tutorials and, and feedback loops, that's going to be a different section, a uh, different video. And we'll talk about that go to section based on answer in that video. So multiple choice. There we go. Let's add another question here. Okay, I'm going to add a multiple choice grid. This is good for matching, matching a problem to an answer, matching um, an uh, observation with an inference, matching vocabulary is how I'm going to use it. I like putting the whatever's going to be longer in the row column, positive particle. Negative particle. Only because I think it looks a little better, but you can play around with it. Um, and, and you can have as many rows as you want. Just don't make it too crazy because then, if I'm, you know, as far as when it loads on their screen, it might look a little, a little funky. You can always check it out when you do that preview from the student view. Okay. Now, this is the step I sometimes forget. So, again, this is going to be matching. Okay. Answer key, because look, it looks like it's already going to match for you, right? But you want to hit the answer key because you actually have to, like, put it in. Boom, boom, boom. You can change point values. There you go. So you do have to do that extra step, which sometimes I forget. If you do forget, which I have done, um, I go back. At, like, if the kids are like, it's marking it wrong. I'm not getting any points. I go back. I fix it, and it does rescore for them. So that's that's good to know. But you know, try to do that. And then you have to do the three dots. You have to do it and shuffle. Otherwise, it will look up, show up as matching. So hitting that three dots, shuffle for sure. And I like also doing limit one response so they can't choose, um, you know, two particles being positive, something like that. Okay, so that's um, multiple choice grid. Let's add another question. Maybe you want to do short answer. I don't use short answer very often. I use it when I want like a one word or two word phrase. Um, beyond that, no. And, I, and also paragraphs I don't use because I think Google Forms is not a good place for uh, collecting their writing. I like a Google Doc for that. So I, you know, every format has its own pros and cons. So which particle is positive? Okay. And then you might even give them a word bank. Right. Proton, neutron, it's up to you. Electron. But, all right, so what's the point if I give them word bank? Well, maybe I want them to actually physically type it out instead of just always clicking. It right. works your brain in a slightly different way having to like type it out. Yeah. Um, answer key. Proton, and I could put proton. You know, I can, I can have, or actually, I should do it this way. Maybe they do all caps. Um, proton. I don't know what else they could do. Oh, maybe that way. Yeah. Or if you don't want to, um, right? So that's one way of, of scoring it. And then hopefully, and you can also, oh, I should go back. Let me go back to answer key. Let me change the point values. You can add answer feedback. So if you, you know, um, you might want to, you could even tell them in the question, 
So adding answer feedback, I don't use it as much as I probably should. It could be I could even record it if you have a moat. Um, uh, protons are positive. That way they are getting the answer. Think. Okay, proton can be positive. Yeah, bring something cutesy or, or a hint or, you know, a correct answer. Again, I, I probably should use that more than I do. Okay, done. Again, I want to make sure everything's set. Response validations is they have to get it correct before moving on. And we're going to talk more about that in another video. Uh, you would only use that maybe if it's at the end of a section. But if you're just, you know, it's, if it's just a question, it's not like an escape room or something, then I probably would not use that. Okay, okay. Um, let's take a look at another question. I'm going to add another. Here we go. Okay, again, I don't use paragraphs. I think paragraphs are better, better for Google Docs. If you want to use it, I would say use it with no points because you want to be able just to read it and you can maybe grade it as a separate assignment, um, but you want the Google Form to grade all the others so they get that instant feedback. Check boxes is great. Okay, so which for more than one answer. Like which of the following are, I don't know, nouns, which of the following are causes of World War II, which of the following are examples of metaphor, which of the following are linear functions, you know. Uh, so which of the following are subatomic particles? And then tell them how many. I really emphasize this. Choose three. Otherwise, they're, if they choose two, yeah, they were right. They just weren't completely right, you know. Just tell them. <laughs> there's really, there's not much of an upside to, to frustrating them in not telling them. Um, so proton, neutron, electron, orbitals. Um, what else? I don't know. Elements. Okay. And then you have to pick, you have to go to the answer key, check off the ones that are correct, like make sure it matches three, three. Um, sometimes I'll make it three points then. All right. Boom. Done. And again, you, this one you really want to shuffle. <laughs> okay. So that did not, it's not the top three. So again, it's, it'll shuffle it for you and it'll shuffle it randomly for each student, which is nice. Check boxes. Okay, next. I think this will be the last one I do I, that I like to use. Um, I don't use drop downs. Good, it's like multiple choice. But if your answer choices are long, and it takes up like too much screen, um, like like chunks of text are your drop down box answers, then that's a good place to use a drop down. But I'm gonna do linear scale. How do you feel about photons? And I know nothing. <laughs> uh, master. Okay. And I'm going to change it to one to three. That way they really have to pick. All right. So I, one to three scales kind of just nice and easy. Actually, maybe I'm going to four. That way they don't have a middle to choose. They always want to choose the middle. That's why they have to at least be sum it up. So yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Okay. So those are some question choices to play with. I try to use a variety um, in my work because I, I think it works the brain in different ways. Okay. Hope that helped.